Hello friends from the homeopathic world. Today I'm going to talk about our latest work of placing kingdoms on the grid of the periodic table, which we call the map of homeopathy. This amazing technique that we have shared with the world for the past couple of years has helped us to get great results. At the same time, it has helped colleagues and friends from all over the world to get fantastic results. But there have been some friends and there have been some people who wonder why do we need to have numbers and things in homeopathic prescription? Many a times the feeling that we get from colleagues is that in homeopathy you shouldn't have so many numbers. Yeah, Homeopathy is all about speaking, understanding the story of the individual and numbers is very restrictive. That makes it more mechanical and you lose the beauty of the prescription. I agree with this fact that language of the patient is most vital. The story of the patient, the way the patient comes to a remedy and the way we understand it is the whole beauty of the science. But the numbers that we talk about and the numbers that we have introduced makes this entire talk of the patient more holistic and more useful. Yeah. And this thought or this need has come for the past few years when despite having so many tools at hand, yeah, the Matra Medica, the repertory, various tools which are amazing and brilliant, despite having them, we found that there is a need for a simplified approach, a need for a holistic approach which can help far more people than what we have been able to help with these available tools. So adding more tools, adding more techniques helps us make successful and bigger prescription. Imagine uh, case taking. Yeah, when you ask so many things about the patient, I mean, you nearly talk for an hour and there's huge amount of information that we collect from the patient. And then what do we do? We take bits in the beginning, from middle, from the end, see what is more important and we create a concoction and then compare that with the remedy that the patient requires. Many times we do get the right remedy, but that does not happen all the time. And then we are wondering what do we do next? So if you can compare the totality yeah, of collecting everything from the patient to a ball, yeah, this remedy picture is like a ball. And when you take this remedy picture and try to find the remedy, it is like throwing this ball out in the open space, trying to figure out what to give what to prescribe and that's why it becomes a hit and miss. Now, here is where we give this whole story a little more shape. The same ball, the same beautiful collection of symptoms, not just in tits and bits, but the entire story, the entire valuable information that the patient has shared with us, how about we collect that entire story and make that into this beautiful ball and throw that ball in the space but the difference is you throw a graph around it. You throw an x-axis and a y-axis and you throw that ball between this x-axis and y-axis. Immediately this ball is no more in space. This ball gets a definition. This ball is not lost what to do and what to give. But this ball definitely notes what strength and what quality this ball has and what kind of a remedy will this ball help. Yeah, the symptom collection that will help this patient. Now, imagine this x-axis which can be graded in terms of the achievements of the patient, the strength of the patient. Based on that, you have the x-axis. And the y-axis, which can be based or which is based on the determination of the patient. The determination or the driving force of the patient, the intensity with which he can achieve what he wants. And if you can grade the patient based on these two axes and place the ball that way, you know the quality of your patient, which encompasses everything. So this is about the patient. Where does the remedy come? Imagine 
the same x and y axis, the same gradient that we used to plot the patient. How about we plot all the kingdoms, the plants, the minerals, the animals, the no source, the imponderables, the soft coats, the stones, the viruses, the bacteria, the fungi, you name it and you put it exactly on the same x-axis and y-axis, wouldn't that be amazing? And wouldn't it be amazing to give this x and y-axis and place this x and y-axis on the grid of the periodic table? Wouldn't that make it more beautiful? A map is exactly that. The x and y-axis that I spoke to you is placed on the grid of the periodic table which goes from above down and from left to right. You place the patient, the ball of information on this particular map and place all the remedies under the sun on the same grid of the periodic table with the same gradient and match the two. Wouldn't that make life easy in making a prescription? Definitely it does. In today's day and age, yeah, where we have road signs, road names, and you try to find a direction using those road signs and road names. Isn't it easy to put that location, to pin that location on your map, on your phone, and can't you arrive at that spot more easily? And this magic of your map on your phone that brings you to that destination are numbers. That is exactly what we have done in homeopathy is we have given patient behavior numbers and similarly, we have given remedy behavior its own numbers like the GPS. And what our technique does is matches this GPS number of the patient with the GPS number of the remedy. And then you have a choice of selecting n number of remedies which have got similar numbers, similar qualities. It can be from the plant, the mineral, the animal, the gem, the bacteria, the viruses, the fungi. You name the subgroup or the kingdom, the same numbering logic can be applied to all and you get a choice to select from. And this way, you can match your patients and give the right remedy. That is exactly what a map does. And this is exactly what we would love to share with the world. So join us to know more about this map, this technique, this approach on our webinars, which we begin in about a month's time from today. And learn the same from all our seminars that we have been doing. We'll be beginning in New York, going to Berlin, Romania, England. Join us in Sorrento in September for the Lima Congress, LMHI Congress. Or join us in Canada, Italy, Russia, wherever. Learn and grow. Learn and make best use of the map. If you can't interact with us on any of these platforms, Watch our videos, watch our free videos, webinars, because the map is for all of us to use and progress and move on. Thank you.